Welcome to the WHHI News. I'm Ellie McNair, and here's a look at your headlines. This week, South Carolina released its report cards on last year's school performance. The report card is based on a number of criteria, such as academic performance in English and math, as well as graduation rates. Only three Beaufort County schools were considered below average or unsatisfactory. Now, that's down from seven schools a year ago. Six schools were rated excellent, and nine more were graded as good. Now, nearly half of the 35 schools, that's 17 of them, were rated average. Among the excellent schools were Bluffton High School, Bluffton Elementary, Riverview Charter School, Coosa Elementary, Okatee Elementary, and Red Cedar Elementary. Schools with unsatisfactory marks were Shanklin Elementary and Whale Branch Elementary. Robert Smalls Academy got a below average rating. Well, it's never a good thing when a package you're expecting fails to show up, but it's even worse for the delivery company, especially when it's because one of their employees might be stealing. 39-year-old Marcus Steinman of the Sun City area, who worked on the package assembly line at the UPS processing facility on Hilton Head Island, has been arrested for allegedly tampering with and stealing small packages. This news comes on the heels of reports that an employee at the island's North End U.S. Post Office was removed from that location and accused of stealing cash and checks from Islanders' mail. The uh, troubles in Beaufort County government continue. Interim County Administrator John Robinson has fired County Parks and Recreation Director Shannon Loper. According to a county spokesperson, Loper approved an $800,000 playground equipment purchase for a Port Royal Park without getting prior approval from the county council. The county's procurement process requires council approval for any purchases over $200,000. That playground equipment cost almost four times that much. Late last month, the county council reviewed the playground plans and approved the purchase several months after that equipment had already been installed. If you live in Port Royal, the political season is already heating up. Monday, the two candidates for mayor, incumbent Joe DeVito and Councilman Kevin Phillips, will debate at the Port Royal Elementary School at 6.30, taking your questions for an hour, right after you get a chance to meet the town councilor candidates, Jerry Ashmore and Jorge Guerrero, who were the only two who filed for the two positions on town council. One topic the mayoral candidates are sure to address is the recent controversy over Safe Harbor Marina's redevelopment plans for the port of Port Royal. Vice President Kamala Harris has only been given lukewarm support by many national politicians and mainstream media, but she rocked the house at the College of Charleston Wednesday as she tried to motivate students to vote in next year's elections. She said, quote, you have only known a climate crisis. You have only known active shooter drills. You became aware of injustices when you witnessed what happened to George Floyd, and I know you all ain't having that, end quote. The College of Charleston was the seventh stop in her month-long Fight for Our Freedoms College tour. For information on these stories and more, visit the news sources on your screen. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly Twitter. And if you have a story idea, email us at news at whhitv.com. And now with sports, here's Justin Jarrett. Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by LocoSports.com. We're knocking on the door of another exciting week of high school football in the Loco with a jam-packed slate of 15 games across our four-county coverage area. An anomaly created because we only have two Loco on Loco battles. The stakes will be high in the tank as the May River Sharks try to nail down their first Region 7-4A win after opening with frontrunners Lucy Beckham and James Island, but they'll have to contend with a confident Colleton County Cougars team coming off a huge 26-21 homecoming win over the Hilton Head Seahawks a week ago. It's a bit of a homecoming for Cougars coach Adam Kinlock, who spent time as an assistant at May River before a long run as offensive coordinator at Whale Branch. Major playoff implications. Not so much at Thomas Hayward Academy, where the Skiza 1A Rebels host Skiza 2A foe Buford Academy on Friday, but that sure doesn't mean this one doesn't mean anything. Coach Nick Shuford and quarterback Dietrich Shuford are going back to their old stomping grounds to roam the visiting sidelines in BA Blue, so this cross-classification clash has plenty of juice. In other notable games being played in our neck of the woods, undefeated Whale Branch is back in Seabrook for homecoming with a key region clash against Allendale Fairfax, and Red Hot HHCA looks for its sixth straight win with PD Academy in town. Elsewhere in Region 7-4A, the Bluffton Bobcats hit the road to take their best shot at undefeated James Island, and Hilton Head aims for its first region win with a home game against unbeaten Lucy Beckham. 
Plus, Hampton County hosts Woodland in a matchup of number five and number six in Class 2A. We'll get you ready for kickoff with Loco Game Day Live at 12.30 p.m. Friday and bring it all home on Loco Pigskin Live at 11.30 p.m. Friday night on the Loco Media YouTube channel. For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco. Thanks a lot, Justin. Maria Soden has our forecast. Thanks, Allie. Yep, so taking a look ahead, we are going to see a little bit more rain before we get a break this weekend. Also, we're going to see the temperatures go up and down as we finish out this week and getting into next week. So taking a look at Friday, it's going to be cloudy with passing showers throughout the day, and then we are going to see a thunderstorm roll through in the evening. Hillman's give a high of 76, a low of 66. Bluffton's give a high of 77, a low of 65. And Beaufort's give a high of 76 and a low of 64. The sunrise for Friday is going to be at 724 and sunset is going to be at 654. Looking at the beach tides, high tide is going to be at 820 a.m. and low tide is going to be at 331 p.m. Taking a look into the weekend, a little bit into next week. Saturday is going to be sunny. It's partly cloudy with the highs getting into the 80s and lows in the 70s. Come Sunday, it's going to be sunny, but we are going to see the highs drop down into the 70s, lows in the 60s. And then come Monday, it's going to be windy in the morning and then it's going to be otherwise partly cloudy. But we are going to see the highs are only going to get into the 60s, lows in the 50s. That's it for today. Let's head back to the desk. Thanks so much, Maria. When we come back, we'll find out about realignment of high school sports. Stay with us.